As we begin our service this morning, we acknowledge and express our gratitude that our Westwood building and many of us gathered here today are situated on Treaty 6 territory. Recognition of traditional lands is an important first step in examining what we can do to actively honor the 94 calls to action in the Commission of Canada Truth and Reconciliation Report. Take a moment to consider the traditional lands where you are situated right now. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian Congregation, a welcoming community that embraces a free and meaningful search for truth. We search for truth everywhere, extending our reach to earth-based practices, words and deeds of prophetic people, and wisdom from the world's many religions. But first and foremost, we reach our truth through personal direct experience. Each of us is our own authority. My name is Lisa Stein and my pronouns are she and her. I'm your service leader for today's All Ages Reaching for Spring service. Alara Stefania Gadet, whose pronouns are they and them, is the Director of Religious Education here at Westwood. They will deliver the homily and also have some special guests and a number of fun surprises for us. As such, this morning is a special All Ages service to celebrate spring. At Westwood, we cherish the role that we play as an intergenerational community. Our musicians are Sheila Kaloran and Rebecca Patterson. Tech support is provided by Alara Stefania Cadet and Bill Lee. If you're here for the first time or are still new to Westwood, I bid you a special welcome. We're glad you found us in this virtual space. In the future, we look forward to gathering together in our beautiful building and grounds. But until then, we share this virtual space and time every Sunday morning as a continuing expression of our commitment and gratitude for our beloved community. As many of you may know, yesterday was May 1st, which is an earth-based practice known as Beltane. Beltane is a day of special significance. It lies between the spring equinox and the summer solstice and is a time to celebrate the fertility of the land, planting crops and fire. It is the time when the boundary between our world and the fairy world is thin and magical events are more likely. Our days are getting longer, the air is getting warmer, we are reaching for the warmth of the sun and the feeling of possibility and fresh horizons is rising. If you have your chalice ready, we're going to do our chalice lighting. And today's chalice lighting is a nature poem called What We Need Is Here by Wendell Berry. Geese appear high over us, pass and the sky closes. Abandon as in love or sleep, holds them dear their way. Clear in the ancient faith, what we need is here. And we pray, not for new earth or heaven, but to be quiet in heart and in eye, clear. What we need is here. morning. Elm, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm really good, Alara. I'm really excited to be here today. I haven't seen all of you in quite a while, and, and I just got back from Fairyland because I went to go visit at Beltane, so I'm really happy to be back, and I'm really happy to have gotten to visit all of my family and friends. It was a lovely time. I'm so glad to hear that, Elm. Did you notice our new background? I did. It's really beautiful. It reminds me of my fairy tree. I'm so honored that you thought of me when you were getting that background. I can feel almost like I'm in fairyland during our story times now. I definitely was thinking of you and your fairy tree, so I'm really glad that you like it, Elm. I don't know if it looks exactly like your fairy tree, but I'm still happy it reminds you of home. Yeah, and plus this has become home now. Now I have two homes. I have home here and I have home in Fairyland. And I feel like that's extra special. But I have a story to tell all of you because the one thing that I still always feel a little bit homesick for in Fairyland when I'm here is, well, our goals and what we reach for there compared to what we reach for here. Huh, you've never really talked to me about this, Elm. What do you mean by that? Well, in fairy 
fairy land. Everything we do has to do with nature and taking care of our natural world and our fairy tree and the flowers and the bumblebees. And then I come here and, well, it can be a little challenging because the priorities are a little different. You know what I mean? There's like the priorities of getting a good job and being good neighbors. And those are important things too, but I just really miss the priorities of taking care of the natural world and reaching for the sky and having those natural surroundings really feel like enough and that I really belong there. I still haven't quite found my sense of belonging in the natural world here because it's not something we focus on as much. Hmm. You're right about that. That's really hard. I definitely work on it myself. I know that I really feel a sense of belonging in our river valley and in our garden, but it's not the same thing as living in a fairy tree for sure. Yeah, and all of our songs are around reaching for nature and really using nature as an example for how we can reach inside ourselves too. I just really love those teachings and it's trickier to remember them here, but I'm always happy to share them when I do remember and think about them because it is what I've grown up with. So do you have a song that might be about that, Elm? We all love how much you enjoy singing and all of the songs that you have brought us from Fairyland have made us very joyful. Do you have a song about that that you could share with us? Oh, I actually do. One of my very, very favorite songs that my grandmother fairy taught me when I was little is called Reaching Everywhere. Would you like to hear it? I definitely think we would like to hear it. Could you sing it for us? Yes, I would love to. Okay, there's even some actions and I'm going to put the lyrics in the chat and that way you can sing along with us too. Oh, Elm, that's a great idea. All right, you go ahead. I'm very excited to learn this song. Okay, here it goes. Reach hands up to sun. Feel her warm your skin. Reach roots down to earth. Feel connection with kin. Reach inside yourself. Feel the drumming of your heart. Reach all around you. Feel the web of which you're a part. That was really beautiful, Elm. I really love that song. I hope that you do too. And thank you for reminding us that sometimes nature is a really good reminder of what we reach for. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in our mini homily later, but I think that was a really, really helpful beginning. Thank you so much, Elm. And thank you all for enjoying my songs. I love sharing them so much. They help me feel at home. Thanks, Elm. At this time in our service, we pause to reflect on our week and meditate on the milestones, joys, concerns, and sorrows in each of our lives. Community is deepened by sharing with each other what is in our hearts. We invite you to type your joys and concerns into the chat as Sheila plays.
We also recognize and cherish the joys and concerns that remain in our hearts. While remaining on mute, please join in reciting the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Our congregation is entirely self-governed and financially supported by the voluntary generosity of our members and friends. Donations to Westwood are accepted and appreciated at any time by, the fo by following the instructions found here and on our webpage. We now take this moment to celebrate the programs, events, and activities that we lovingly support throughout the year. While remaining on mute, we invite you to join Rebecca in singing the affirmation. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive. morning, friends. I love elm songs so much, don't you? Curiously, they always seem to speak to a message around our monthly theme. Such a coincidence. I've had religious educators from far and wide ask if it's okay to share them with their kids, and of course, elm always says yes, because our story corner friends all love making new friends. This morning, I'd like to take a bit of a deeper dive into the song from Fairyland that Elm shared with us and explore how it can support us in being aware of how nature gives us good examples of some healthy places, places to reach for in our lives. Elm mentioned in her story that in Fairyland, it's very much the way of life to reach for nature. I feel like spring is the time on our earth-centered wheel of the year that I feel most strongly connected with nature. So it's the time of year that I do habitually reach towards my natural surroundings. But where and what does nature reach towards? And how can watching and learning some answers to this question be helpful for us? First line of Elm's song was, reach hands up to sun, feel her warm your skin. We love plants in our house. We all have different favorite kinds of plants and we all have different favorite parts in the process of planting and gardening and caring for plants, but we all love plants. I love being surrounded by greenery and planting seeds and transplanting. And I absolutely love cooking a meal that has come almost entirely from our garden. Nadia is the one who is amazing at tending the plants as they grow and noticing what they need. All the carrying water takes more energy than I have to spend, but seeing the results of her care and Kaylee's help is pure magic. Our house is totally full of plants, so we all have relationship with them and none of us doubt their intelligence. They know what they need, and they are great at communicating their needs when we slow down enough to pay attention. And of course, one of the things they always need is light. Sunlight is best, but grow lights also work. We have a whole setup of grow lights in our otherwise very dimly lit basement, so I can assure you they definitely work. And the plants definitely reach for the light. And they will reach for the sun over grow lights. The plants we have in our living room with grow lights above them still reach for the window. You can see it. Nadia and Kaylee rotate the plant pots so that all of the leaves can get some sun because it's clearly their preference. We also need sun. There are studies that show North Americans are chronically deficient in vitamin D because of the angle of the sun hitting this part of the world. We need light as physical beings. We need sunlight. Cats also show us this. It's very true that they move with the sun around the house. They're intelligent creatures. They know what they need. Reach up to the sun 
and really feel that warmth absorb into your skin next time that you go outside. How does it make you feel? The next line of Elm's beautiful fairyland song is, reach roots down to earth, feel connection with kin. Now, I had to ask Elm what kin meant because it's not a word we use very, option, very often, but Elm explained to me that it means family or what we're related to. Fairyland has a very similar idea around family and relationship as some of our indigenous peoples that teach all life is family. Did you know that the Anishinaabe and Blackfoot call rocks their grandfathers? This isn't metaphorical or symbolic. They have the understanding that rocks were here on earth much, much longer than us, and that all life is family, so the rocks are our grandfathers. How do you think that our lives as settlers might be different if we deeply held the feeling and awareness that all life is kin rather than commodity? Reach inside yourself, feel the drumming of your heart. Our heartbeats are miraculous with or without a belief in supernatural divinity. The sheer number of things that had to occur for each of us to be in this virtual space together in this moment is nearly incalculable. Incalculable, never mind probable. I've almost died too many times to count, and that's just me. I'm sure I'm not the only one here who can make that claim. Or how about the likeliness of our parents meeting? Our grandparents? All of our ancestors stretching all of the way back? or even the probability of life beginning on earth. Awe and wonder are primary factors in religious experience, and our lives together are awe-inspiring and wonder-filled. Every time I take a moment and feel my heart still beating, I'm reminded of this. So I'm pretty sure that's what Elm was encouraging when she shared this land, line from her Fairyland song. Take a moment now, if it feels safe to do so, and see if you can feel that heartbeat within you. The last line of Elm Song is, reach all around you, feel the web of which you're a part. Seems suspiciously in line with our seventh principle. Last summer, before there were any vaccines developed and life was even more uncertain than it is now, Kaylee and I took to befriending our neighborhood birds. We bought black gold sunflower seeds for our songbirds and put the feeder in our backyard. And we bought peanuts for the big birds and squirrels and put them in the front yard. We'd learned at a special Shabbat at Temple Beth Ora hosted with the Wild Birth General Store a couple years earlier that the black gold sunflower seeds were perfect for small birds because they're actually too small for the bigger birds to crack open. These are the seeds that I sent to our kids and youth to put into their bird feeders that we'll be making together shortly. Now, I enjoy the company of all of our bird neighbors, but I really love our crows. I realize this is controversial, but our crows don't bully the smaller birds because they don't need to compete for food, and they're super smart. Studies are finding that corvids, which is the bird family that both crows and magpies belong to, have intelligence on par with apes. That's us. I spent so much time with our crows last summer, and I'm planning to again this year, because I really want to be their friend. Which is why, on one warm day last fall, I was so delighted and honored when one of our younger crows decided to spend some time teaching me to speak crow. It was very clear that this is what my crow friend was doing. They were on a branch maybe three feet away from me and I would say something in, or, and they would say something in crow and I would mimic it. And then they would say it again and I would mimic it. And when I mimicked the sound well, it would make a different one. This went on for at least 15 minutes and I was completely awestruck. Speaking with this crow was a religious experience. Now, the only crow sound that I really understand clearly is the one to let them know that there's food for them. 
It's two loud, short caws, but they hear it and they come for the peanuts. And then the magpies come and they take turns at the peanut dish. But I also know that the softer coos they make are happy sounds. And if many of them are cawing together, it usually has to do with a warning or wanting to chase away a predator. Last summer, when I couldn't reach out to humans outside of my own home with any certainty of safety, I reached out for relationship with my animal and plant kin in a much deeper and more intentional way than I ever had before. Now the web of life feels tangible, far more real to me than it was. I feel seen by the crows in our yard. They know me. I sat with them every day for hours, watching them eat, painting, and making crow sounds at them. And I wish I'd done it sooner, taken that time to be present with them, because I learned that when you reach for life, life reaches back. And that isn't unique to humans. It's the whole web. So, if you haven't yet gathered what you need to make a bird feeder, and you don't have a bird feeder yet, please consider going to gather the following supplies. I'm actually going to play our candle music one more time to give us time to go get what we need. So here's what you'll need if you don't have it already. An egg carton, a length of string about two feet long to cut in half, a pair of scissors, and if you want, something to decorate with. If getting bird seed is a hardship in any way, please feel free to message me and I'll gladly mail you enough to fill your feeders for a couple of times because it's so joyful watching those birds eat close by. So I'm going to pop on our candle music so you can go get what you need. My name is Alara, I use they, them pronouns, and I work with our kids and youth here at Westwood Unitarian. Today I'm excited because I am going to show you how to make a egg carton bird feeder. So if you are one of our kids or youth or young at heart who requested the materials, you will already have everything you need in the package that I sent out except for a pair of scissors and something to decorate with. This is what you'll be doing with what is in that magical package that our friend Elm the Fairy sent out along with a little bit of help from her human friends. So, the first thing you will need to do is to poke four little holes in the corners of your egg carton. And that is where our string is gonna be going through. So we just need four holes and you can get an adult to help you do this if you are not wanting to use a sharp object, which is totally okay. 
And there we go. So we've got a hole on every corner. They don't need to be in exactly the same spot. They just need to be there. All right, so then the next step is my personal favorite. We get to decorate our egg cartons. Now, you can use anything that you've got at home for this part, but being the painter that I am, I'm going to use some green paint just to decorate these guys up. You can use markers, you can use colored pencils or crayons. I would advise against using sparkles on them because it's not great for the environment and we are doing this to celebrate Earth Day. And if you use wax crayons, then when it starts to break down, you can still compost it, which is fabulous because these are egg cartons so they won't last forever. Uh, and if it's painted, you can still put it on into the recycling. So. All right, nice and green. I'm gonna paint the ends a darker green just for some excitement and variety. You might wanna paint some flowers. What are some things that you think of on Earth Day? Maybe you could paint some of those onto your egg carton or draw some of those things on your egg carton object. So we have our lovely green bird feeder. All right, so the next step is getting our string attached. So again, if you are one of the recipients of Elm's magical fairy bird seed packages, you will have two lengths of string already. I did not get a package, probably just because Elm decided if I was helping her make the packages, she didn't need to give me one too, but I do, however, have the source of the string, so we're good. Okay, so we're going to thread this through one of the corners like this. Thread it on through, tie a little knot, and then we're going to go corner to corner, so diagonally. So if you put this string on this corner, the other side of it is going in a diagonal line over onto this corner. Okay, so once you've got the first string on, it's like this. I'll put it against the white and then you can see it. So you've got one string, time for the second string. Now through the magic of television, we have a completed bird feeder. See how it's got the four strings? And if you do it that way and then you hang it with both of the strings, it'll be nice and stable on the branches. And then the little bumps from the egg carton in the middle are a great place for the birds to sit on and they'll be able to eat. And then last, but definitely not least, you're going to want to fill up your bird feeder. So in the packages, Elm and I included some magical fairyland bird seeds, but they are black gold sunflower seeds. Uh, they look like this. Lovely little sunflower seeds. And you can get these at most bird stores or pet supply stores. The reason that they're great is because they're too small for a lot of the bigger birds to actually crack into, so they attract specifically the little baby songbirds. The little songbirds, they really love these seeds. And then, voila, we have a full, beautiful Earth Day bird feeder all ready to hang up in your backyard and attract those songbirds and help out the neighborhood keep up the biodiversity for Earth Day. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your bird feeders.
it that way, Spruce, but you're right, because I came on Beltane last year when the wor the veil between our world and the fairy world is the thinnest. So I came to visit and then I got stuck, but now I'm here. Now I'm going to stay here because I've made so many friends and I love all of you and I love sharing my stories and my songs with you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I want to ask you something. What's that, Spruce? For your one year anniversary, what made you decide to stay here? How did we reach you more than your family even reached you? You you decided to stay with us and that's really, really special and I'm really, really excited, but but why? Well, I guess that's a good question, but I think it's because when I'm in Fairyland, like I said, I'm very connected to nature and my family and my friends and I really love it there. But here, I feel like I have a little bit more of a purpose because all of the people who I tell stories to, the stories are new to them. They're not the same stories like in Fairyland. In Fairyland, we've all heard the fairy stories. But here, I get to reach new people's hearts, and that's really exciting to me. Wow, that's really cool, Elm. I'm really happy that you decided to stay. I would miss you a lot if you decided to go back to Fairyland this year at Beltane. I bet everybody's really happy Elm didn't go back to, Bel to Fairyland on Beltane because we would miss her. Well, I know I'm happy about it because I don't know what I would do without your songs for our story times, Elm. I love your songs, and I love all of the stories you tell us from Fairyland. So I'm really happy that we reached your heart so that you can reach ours. Thank you so much, both of you. And thank you all for being so welcoming and lovely and for hearing my stories. I'm really excited to stay here and be friends with you and tell you many more stories in the years to come. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Happy anniversary to me! Happy anniversary to you, Elm! Yeah, happy anniversary. We're super glad you decided to stay. Thanks, everybody, for celebrating with us and for understanding how sometimes when our stories are different, that's what makes it even more special when we reach each other. Hey, yeah! That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, I'm gonna go. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Elm, Spruce, and Alara. And now please join us for our closing hymn, 413, Go Now in Peace, played by Sheila. Our closing words are a translated proverb from North American indigenous peoples. Treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. We are more than the sum of our knowledge. We are the products of our imagination. Thank you for joining us this morning. And next week, please join us as we welcome Reverend Anne back to Westwood for her sermon, Reaching In.